David asked me to share with you in a little more specific terms um, my particular practice that I often apply to the three paragraphs of the Shema. The inspiration for this is the fact that I, in many synagogues, the first paragraph of the Shema is chanted together very lovingly, that paragraph that's all about God's love and we feel that love. We sing it together in Torah Chope. Very often in congregations, we sing the third paragraph, which is the one that reminds us about tzitzit and about remembrance and the ability to be connected. But we often just mumble through or ignore the middle paragraph. And I thought, you know, this is really a problem because the rabbis very carefully, very carefully, the very beginning of the rabbinic tradition, even earlier, chose these three paragraphs to be read together as the most important unit before the before the Amidah was created, the Shema and its blessings was the most important unit, the first unit of Jewish prayer. So I want to share with you what I do to kind of rescue that middle paragraph. And I share, I'm going to offer you the opportunity to, to, to do that practice with me together. This is what I do. I sing all three paragraphs aloud, but I um, try to add some drama to them and to really understand this particular intention for each one. So the first paragraph, the via hafta. That's the paragraph, you know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And all your heart. This is just the beautiful process that we go through that our prayers up until this point in the morning have opened us up to, to feel the presence of love, to feel God's presence in, uh, in the words of Torah that we receive and that we teach and we live to live, to know that we are not alone, that we are loved the second paragraph is the one that's often ignored or we don't know what to do with it because it speaks about um, that, that what seems to be a very archaic and difficult to accept deuteronomic um, uh, theology of reward and punishment. If you do this, God will open up the skies and, and things will grow. But if you don't do this, then everything will be terrible. And, and it's not our experience of the world. This is how I experience this. I experience a second blessing, not as a, you know, if you do this paragraph, but actually I experience it as a promise that this is actually what is going to happen in your life. What this um, uh, paragraph tells us is that even though God is giving us its vote, and there are moments when we feel connected and we know what the world needs from us, it will happen willy nilly that we will we will stray, we will get confused, we will forget our moorings, and then we will feel completely disconnected from God, and we will feel completely in exile. That's what the second paragraph promises, is the truth. It is our nature, but it also then says that you will remember, and it is okay because you can always come back again to focus, to know who you are, to know what your connection is. And then the third paragraph, is kind of like a glorious response to the second paragraph because it's in the third paragraph where the Torah says, and not only do that, but you have rituals like these tzitzit, which will help you. There are rituals, there are patterns of behavior that will help you regain your mooring so that when you're going like this and you don't know what's going on in your life, you'll be able to center. You'll be able to come back and know better once again who you are. And that's a promise too.